Hey guys, it's Kelly. Hey, in this video I'm going to show you how I use the contents of a card kit to make this art journal page. I love that sunflower stamp. I can't get enough of it. I hope you guys like it too. I hope you find yourself inspired with some of the things that you see in here. That, that textured background looks difficult. Wait till you see how easy it is. There it is. <laughs> I used the paper bag that came in the October 2022 Simon Says Stamp kit that we always throw away. I was like, nope, I want a simple, easy background. And I haven't done this technique in a while, and it's super quick and easy. Crinkle up a bag, cut it to size, and just ink it with the top of any ink pad that you'd like. Be careful what you, what kind of ink you use. Depending on what you're going to do on top of it, you might get some mud. So I knew I wasn't going to put a lot of water base inks on this, so I just used my oxide ink, and I used walnut stain. And it gave me a nice, really earthy, organic look in the background for what I knew I was going to use, which was that sunflower. So... Don't overthink art journaling, guys. It's super simple. Crinkle up a paper bag, hit it with any ink pad, and you'll have a gorgeous, gorgeous, really, really textured background in minutes. Took no time at all. So I dried it as well and glued it onto the paper that I'm going to use to add it to my, art, my mini art journal. And that stamp, you've probably recognized it if you watch any of my previous ones. That is the visual texture that I add for text in the background. It doesn't say anything. If it does, it's in a language I don't read, but it's not for the purpose of the message. It's for the purpose of the visual texture. And those are some go-to stamps that I have from Tim Holtz, and that's just in my stash. And I like to add that for visual texture in the background. And that stamp set from this kit is insanely gorgeous, but I am a sucker for a sunflower. If it's got sunflowers, I'm all in. I don't know why. I just love them. So, and this stamp is just breathtakingly beautiful and detailed. I'm so in love with it. And I can't wait to, wait to use the bigger version of it that comes in the kit. Those kits are great. Again, I don't, I'm not an affiliate, at least not yet, with Simon Says Stamp. I'm not paid to do this. It's just I like to share things that I purchase them. And if, I just, if I'm just blown away by it, you guys know I, I like to share that with you guys. Because there's so many products to choose from. And I, I like to share the ones that I've found that are successful. Um, I don't like to bag on people, but, you know, the ones that I don't like, I might say, hey, I might not recommend this, uh, um, but I do like to focus on the ones that I do recommend. Hope that makes sense, guys. So I colored it with my markers, and it wound up just gorgeous in my opinion. I'm really happy with it. And then this technique here is, I call it the halo effect. I didn't create it. It's not mine. It's just commonly done, but I'm just recently figuring out that I really, really love it, and it helps me to ground my focal points I have a hard time with critters and focal points, meaning, you know, grounding them to my project and putting the shadow behind it, which is what I'm doing here with the vintage photo. It winds up, it kind of melts into the project like it's supposed to be there. So, and I love how that works. And um, this, I, I leave this section in where I clean my hands, just a tip and trick. I wound up touching the whole ink pad. And if you use hand sanitizer, right on it, it takes it right off immediately. So your hands don't get all crazy inky. So if you don't have hand sanitizer on your desk where you're working, get it because I also use that to clean up my workspace and it works like a charm, especially on the glass mat. It takes care of it instantly. So yeah, I'm doing what I usually do. I just use our archival ink and it's the black soot archival ink and I'm just hitting the outside of it just to bring your eye into that beautiful sunflower. And why I'm using the smaller ones, I don't know. They just, they were there and it was simple. So I just used them. Why not make it quick and easy? I didn't have a whole lot of time. I'm finding that when, I, when I'm in a hurry and I don't overthink it, I wound up with my most favorite pages. <laughs> Go figure, right? So I'm using the vintage photo that was just left on that, um, that sponge there, that ink applicator, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm just using the leftover just to kind of knock back the white from when I fussy cut that flower out. Um, I am going to add some white splatters, but it was a little bit too white, so I needed it muted down, and that was just the ticket to have it kind of melt into the project and look like it was born there. So these, the sentiments, I went with something really simple and easy. These are nice and sticky. I think these are from Tim Holtz, and it's from a previous card kit that I've got. I, I'm still using card kits I got last year. I get so much value out of those. I, I highly recommend them. There's lots of card kits out there. The Simon Says Stamp. One is just happens to be my favorite. Um, I don't get it every single month. Some of you, and I love that they let you look at it before you you go and figure it out. But before you go and just buy it randomly, um, I don't get every one every month. Some of them are have got things that would be duplicates or triplicates for me. 
So I like that they do that too. So that's that's a good selling point for for me. So I wound up just re-inking part of that um, that shadow because I left the leaves out. The leaves kind of reach out, so I just corrected that. And then I got my sentiment down there. It just says um, a smile, enjoy today. I always like to put some kind of uplifting sentiment on there because I go back and look at these for inspiration later. And my so in my mini art journal, the the corners are rounded, and I missed one corner there. I don't know what the heck happened. But I missed one corner. I wound up catching it and doing it, fixing it. But when I was when I was editing this video, that was driving me nuts. I was like, how did I how did I not notice that throughout this whole thing? <laughs> kind of funny. So I just put some white paint down, guys. Added some water to it and did some splatters. I do like that. Um, you can do white or black, whatever you like. I had a lot of black here, and it would have worked either way. But since you can still see little bits of the fussy cutting around the flower, white I thought would work better. You can barely see it in the video, but when you see this in real life, it really is beautiful. And it looks so, it looks so complicated. And it is not, it's so simple. There's nothing complicated about it at all. So, and it literally took me a, maybe about tops 20 minutes, if even that, to, yeah, it was, it took me no time to do this. And I absolutely love how it turned out. And again, I hope you guys do too. So I wanted, just, I wanted to make it just a little bit darker along the outside. And then because I finally got my quarter, corner rounder out, and I had to re-ink what I cut off. And there it is. It's done. Super quick and easy. I hope you guys like it. I hope it inspired you to create something beautiful too. And there is a lot more to come. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. Thanks, guys.